Oh, welcome back to Thursday Night Football Preview. We've got the New York football giants traveling cross-country to San Francisco to take on the Niners as 10-point dogs. Minus 550 if you want to smack the 49er money line. I mean, don't suggest it. It's just <laughs> Wouldn't suggest it, but there's never been safer money. Yeah, most likely. <laughs> um, it's an over-under of 44.5, so they're expecting a whole lot of points from the Niners. They're expecting the opposite of that from... The New York Giants. In the video today, we're gonna we're gonna walk through the you know the general storylines going into the game. We're gonna walk through some of our favorite squares on underdog, you know, pick them that kind of stuff. We've been absolutely railroading underdog the last couple of weeks doing this. We're gonna look at our fantasy rankings because at this point that might be the only enjoyable part of watching this actual game is the fact that you got players playing in the game and uh, and so on and so forth. We'll do our predictions for you know taking the spread, the over under, all that kind of sheesh. So. We're here. We've done made it. Week three. Oh, we, we've more than made it. We've been dominating we've made Thursday it. night. Daniel Jones games. won't make it through this game, though. Yeah, this this is going to be a sloppy one for him. Um, I think when we look at the game overall, it's it's just so mismatched. It's so lopsided. Everywhere you look, left, right, backwards, forwards, transgender, neutral, it's problematic. It's problematic. <laughs> it's <a good> <laughs> There's just no advantage you had for the New York Giants, man. I'm, I mean, they were so sloppy in week one. Get whooped by the Cowboys 40 0. So sloppy in week two. 20 0 against Arizona by by halftime. This is so where they come out and win. Just with no, how hard we're absolutely bashing. Not. I mean, just, I mean, based on happening. the way that we've done these Thursday night <laughs> That's what preview I'm saying. Based games, on that. We, we basically we take the storyline, we give our predictions, and then the exact opposite happens. And I, I can't I can't imagine we go anywhere besides Giants losing by 70 points in this one. I can't even imagine like Giants fans. Giants fans going into this game. You're going to tell me you're going to compete in this game? You're going to tell me you got a fucking chance to win this game? There's no chance. No shot. No, their chance to win was last week. And if it wasn't for the Cardinals, who are purposely tanking, and in the you know second half was like, guys, we need to lose for Caleb Williams. That's the only reason the Giants came back and won. The Cardinals... Man know, management they, put a call uh, in. The Cardinals yeah, 100%. Up. The Cardinals was, was like, we're, we're trying. We're trying Even to lose right now, but we can't. Saquon was in this game, like... Would the spread change all that much? I, I don't think it would. No, they never change the spread for running backs. Maybe I, I feel like the biggest I feel change like Saquon could though. Because like he's so he's such a big part of their offense. Dude, but I like, honestly feel like he's I mean, he is a huge part of their offense, but I almost feel like I don't know. So someone can do the research probably and find out. I don't know if there's ever been a spread actually changed by a player. Maybe like Derrick Henry being out one game could move the spread by like a hook or something like that, because he's actually That's it, a hook. Oh, it wouldn't move more than yeah. Anything more than that is I don't know. T- I, I feel that's like, like those, an extreme. I feel like for those teams who are, rely so much on their running backs, and especially when you go from a guy like Derrick Henry to I, I don't even know who their backup has been these last couple of years. Like Hassan, had, doesn't matter. Going from like Saquon to Matt Breida, like that's a huge drop off. It's not even like you got. I don't fucking know. It's not like you got Roshan Johnson like the Bears do as their second But do you feel like, like I know Saquon's their best player? And maybe this is a bad take, but I know Saquon's their best player, but it also doesn't necessarily always feel like they run their offense through him it feels like he's like a part of the game plan and he makes big Fair. plays but I feel, I feel like half their games they just do whatever they do and like sometimes it runs through Saquon whereas Derrick Henry is like every single time he is their offense the game plan goes Derrick Henry and then we'll figure out the rest of the shit afterwards which is why I feel like with Saquon out he's not replaceable talent wise but he kind of is replaceable That's whereas fair. like Derrick Henry's not he's definitely more of like a sprinkle of a few big games and being everything we use and everything we rely on. Yeah, and I brought this up before, and it's like it's it, it's the reason why they pay Daniel Jones forty million dollars a year for the next four, four for one hundred and sixty mil, right? And some people disagree with it. Saquon gets ten million, eleven million. There's a very big gap in how they value the player, and if Daniel Jones is out, that becomes problematic as whoever the fuck their backup is. But now it's like time for for Daniel Jones to say, "Hey, I'm getting forty million a year. I'm in that." upper echelon I'm like a top eight paid quarterback to, to keep my team in in these types of games yeah I mean I don't, what like what would be acceptable like losing is okay but like if he covers the spread like is that oh does that praise for Daniel Jones like is that where we're at with him like I oh mean, good job he kept it one score it's a 10 point spread my guy like he like that's it's a huge spread but that's I understand but that, like you're if 40 million you want like oh we have real upset potential not like oh you got it within seven that's like, their upside, though. Their upside is that they only lose by one possession. I don't want to, like, throw it all on Daniel Jones because the team overall, like, everything about both sides of the ball uh, on both teams is so lopsided. Like, as I'm looking through the matchups, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find something where I'm like, okay, maybe if the Giants win, 
in this aspect on this side of the line or like the defensive secondary or some shit like that. I'm having so much trouble finding because you look at Andrew Thomas is out with the hamstring. Saquon's out with the ankle. Their line is playing poorly. Even, even though they have a ton of resources like stacked into their line, they're not playing like they, sh- you know, the fourth and seventh overall pick Evan Neal's on the right tackle side. Now getting cooked and Bosa's that's where he plays. You look at their, um, through two games, the giants pass blocking grade ranks 26th. Evan Neal ranks 164th out of 174 qualified offensive line pass blockers. If I did my math right, you said 164th? 164 to 174. And there's five linemen per each 32 teams. It's qualified, so it's like, yeah, it's pretty much. He's one of the worst offensive line guys in pass blocking right now. In it's only total. It's through two games. It's through two games, obviously, but he's a seventh overall pick. He's the seventh overall pick last year. You need more uh, out of that. And when you look at the flip side of – San Fran and their pass rush, man, like we, we looked at the numbers a little bit before, but they're the number one ranked pass rush grade per PFF in the league. And it's because they're stacked with Bosa, Hargrave, Kevin Givens is playing great, Drake Jackson, like all these guys that most people don't really know unless you're like a diehard fan of them. Their eighth highest graded pass rusher per PFF is graded 100 spots higher than the Giants third highest graded pass That's rusher. Crazy. Right. It's like the depth there is just insanity. Cause you, you think like if you had to, Pick a positive of the Giants, you'd think it's their D line, and and, the, and they do. They have really good players, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like the depth is just. But compared to the Niners, it's blown out of the water, and it's right. just it sucks. It's unfortunate for the Giants. So it's like how how does how does New York and, and it's like Waller's their number one guy, right? And you guys have uh, Warner, who's a good cover linebacker. Obviously, oh, yeah. You have uh, Greenlaw, I think, is playing really well in coverage as well. I I don't really know much about your safeties to be honest with you, but like if if all they need to do is cover Waller, I'm sure a defense like this is gonna figure out how to do so. They're just going to live in the backfield. They're just going to live back there. Yeah, absolutely. Hufunga is a, a, a cool safety. He's not much of a coverage guy, but he'll hit somebody. Yeah, Knock so off, he'll, he'll take a head off. Yeah, <laughs> so the question exactly. is, like, how 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 does New York move the fucking ball? It's they like, don't. $40 million Daniel Jones. Yeah, he better put some of that money to fucking running use for his here. life. Yeah, so I don't know. Like, I look at the offense. That's so lopsided. Flip things over. Giants defense has been terrible. And uh, only a two-game sample, so, like, you don't want to dig too much into it. But it still tells you the story of the season so far. Their overall defensive grade, 29th. Run defense, 28th. Pass rush, 20th. Coverage, 28th. Like, they don't have a strong suit anywhere on their team right now. So I don't even know what we're looking forward to in this game. Not much. I'm looking forward to this that game. I'm, I'm looking Money. forward to seeing everybody get a free week and just stat padding. And, uh, you know, free dub. Then you get a mini bye week the next week. So it's all good. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> nice for a Niner fan. Good for the Niners. Yeah. You, have, you have a subset of people in the entire country, in the entire world, that are going to enjoy this game, and it's the San Francisco 49er fans. Yeah, we were, we were talking a little bit about, like, how the NFL used to put, like, the shittiest games on Thursday night. I don't think there was any ill intention behind this one. I think going into the season, we actually, or at least the NFL did, thought that the Giants were going to be I'm going to complain about it, team. so I'm still going to complain. Be like, why the fuck would they put this on Thursday night football? <laughs> you got two playoff teams. Like, should be a great game. Not yeah, but I mean, they're they're like the uh, less talented version of the Vikings, where they they caught a yeah. lot of I don't want to say fluky wins, but you know, a lot of times in the NFL, you can play better than your record shows, and they're yeah. they're paying for their debts of last year. And credit to the NFL, like theoretically, they thought okay, this is a playoff team, maybe wow, s- big company guy over here, maybe seventh overall, Evan Definitely. Neal gets better, you know, <laughs> maybe adding Darren Waller, this team is better, and it just fucking nothing. Yeah, I mean, like worse. if you think about going into last year, they were objectively, and we're wrong about this all the time because like it was like them, Seattle, it's like these are the worst fucking teams ever. <laughs> of course, they're going to win three games. Both teams surprised us, but like the Giants going into last year were looked at as one of the worst all around units i still think from a personnel standpoint it's insane what they pulled off last year because they have high-end talent at like few positions i guess where it matters like d-line is obviously really important but like no pass catching weapons you have daniel jones who had a great year last year but other than that like their actual personnel is terrible and i think you know luck goes against them this year a little bit they're gonna end up with a really really shitty record and closer to what we probably imagined them going into last year with but again like good coaching can probably get you back from being inside the hole and Daniel Jones playing well, it's just this is probably not the get right game for them. No, I mean I would put coaching in that list of things that they get severely outmatched in. Like, yeah, so, that, yeah, that's as, good, as cool too. as Dayball yeah. is, like Shanahan probably going to coach circles around them. And it's yeah. early, but like an L here is like in this division, like that's it's over. They're coached. like even Washington's <laughs> at two and zero now. Like Washington's, are, yeah, they're like, like low key a good team too. Tennessee's is not easy. 
Yeah. I don't know how often. It feels like I know the Bengals, I think, did this like the last two seasons or something. But teams that go only three just straight up don't make the playoffs. Well, they they won last year. They won last week against the Cardinals. Oh, that's right. They yeah. did. They, they, in, my, in your mind, like you think that they lost because they were down 20 to nothing. But – but they this did come back. This one's going to feel like they're an 0-3 team. Yeah, this yeah. one's not going to be good for them. Even, I, I mean, the Niners have Brandon Ayuk probably out. He's not ruled out yet, but shoulders giving us weird vibes. So even without him, he's not a guy who's going to you know move the, move the needle in, in a game like this. I think in a tight game maybe where like you're really battling back and forth and every big play kind of counts. Danny Ayuk, Dimes balls out. Yeah, I mean, Ayuk would make the difference probably there. But otherwise, I think we're just watching this game for fantasy side of things. I think so. you could take a healthy Ayuk. Put them on the Giants roster, and the Giants still get smoked by the Niners. Of course. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's not even close. You could probably take, like, three players off the Niners, give them to the Giants, and wouldn't make a difference. <laughs> That'd be cool to see. Those are always fun what-ifs. But <laughs> Show up to the airport. <laughs> we'll <laughs> tell you where you're going. To the fantasy aspect, the only entertaining aspect we have in this game at this point, I think my hot take is, I don't even know if it's hot. I have Daniel Jones over Brock Purdy just because of the rushing upside. You know, I'm not going to compare the receivers in the passing game, but as far as game script goes, Daniel Jones is going to be passing the second half just to try and make it somewhat respectable. And again, the rushing upside is the biggest pull here is why I barely have him over him. But again, in a one QB league, I have Jones at 17, Purdy at 18. I'm not really looking to start either of these guys unless I'm in a half-two situation. I'm, I'm not either, but I couldn't get myself to start Daniel Jones over Brock Purdy. It's just going to be an ugly game from from the Giants offense in total. Yeah, that's this, fair. this kind of feels like a game where... I could see Daniel Jones maybe ending up throwing for like 300 yards and a touchdown, but There's I could also no see, way. I mean, just like fourth quarter, just throwing the ball 20 yeah, times. Garbage. But, but along with that, that's not enough for me to want to start him because I, I could also see this game coming with a strip sack or two interception. Like before you know it, strip like six or seven fantasy points off Daniel Jones's card just off of like turnovers. And that, that's like what really scares Like best case scenario, he ends up with like 301. But I, I think that comes with probably a slew of bullshit beforehand. I think best case scenario for Daniel Jones this game is he just makes it out alive. I, don't, I think the like Sorry. fifty and one on the ground still a really big possibility. That could be. He could throw for like a, a buck forty. Yeah, fifty and one on the ground. But also, I still think there are like turnovers probably coming, which is going to capsize his, his upside there a little. I mean, bit. and going off of him, the wide receivers, none of them are starting. Like they're not even in wide receiver three, wide receiver four range. I tried to find something to where I could. I wanted to like Hyatt. Based on what we saw in week two and those two deep shots he had, but it's He's like not playing. Yeah, he had less routes run in week two than week one, and I'm like, holy. But you shit. got you got to think though. It kind of feels like this, this happens with so many rookies. It's like the same energy with him, with like Jordan Addison, with Roshan Johnson. It's like limited play time, but every time they get on the field, you're like, they're clearly yeah. better than most of the guys that are on the field against them. So you're obviously rolling the dice a little bit here if you're trying to get into it. I'm just, I guess it's more of just like an intriguing storyline. Mm-hmm. Like I want to see if Jalen Hyatt gets a little more run, see if they take some deep shots down there because they need to make. Something happened, and Hyatt feels like the only guy that's really doing it downfield. But you still feel pretty good about um Yeah, both Aaron tight Waller. ends. Both tight ends I'm pretty high on, and neither of them have given us anything to love. Waller, it's kind of similar to the Daniel Jones. If he could somehow have that 300-yard game, Waller's going to be his guy for it. If they put up a score, I think he's the most likely receiver, weapon, whatever you want to call it, pass catcher, two-score touchdown. And Kittle, Kittle to me is almost this even, feels crazy. even more bold than Waller. Feels so bold. And this is three. because of the Does he even no, have three catches this year? Genuine question. Uh, yeah. Okay. He has not been much of a receiver so far. Yeah, no. what the fuck is going on over there? For someone who bought him in Dynasty, I <laughs> this is getting worse by the day. And this was one I could I told you in the trade targets video yesterday, like I struggle to find any stat as to why you could still have hope, but it's just more of like he's been there, he's done that the past three, four, five his whole career for the most part. I don't see I don't see this be a sustainable fall off where it just doesn't show up. This is a game with no IU where I think you could get in the end zone. All of a sudden we fall back in love with them. That's a good point. I didn't yeah. I, I didn't really think about the IU part. If IU yeah. is out, the targets obviously got to go somewhere. Matt Breda, RB forty revenge game. Yeah, Matt I'm, Breda. I'm not. I just think they're gonna a he's not. This isn't a revenge game as much as we want to play with that. And B, they're gonna have to ban in the run <laughs> no, game not. so you don't, quickly. You don't think it is? No. Okay. It's crazy. There, there's nothing about Brady I want. Like he's not even in the RB three range. Yeah, no, I think I actually um I think in as far as fantasy goes, I don't even think he's the guy you want to stash. Like, uh, would you be surprised if he even like? Are we expecting him to lead the? I think it's Gary Brightwell season. I think I, I think if I had to on bet on like Brightwell. who's gonna, 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 gonna get the most touches, it's probably Matt Breda. But like Brightwell's gonna be annoying. They'll probably activate Eric Gray, the rookie. Like I, I kind of like Eric Gray. I wasn't a huge fan of him, but I wouldn't be surprised if in two weeks we're like Eric Gray somehow had more touches than Breda over this span. But I, I think from what I'm hearing, Breda is like supposed to be the guy. But I don't know what what the guy means in this fucking situation. 
That's fair. It's not a good situation. I just don't even think that, like, it, Matt Breda is probably not going to get, like, the Saquon role of, like, 100% no. touches. So you're getting no. limited touches on a bad team against a good defense. Like, you can you can just not own Matt well, Breda. It's fine. Speaking of limited touches, do you think it's crazy to have CMC as my RB1 still? Uh, It's like his floor is so high. Yeah. It's almost like you just feel fine about putting him RB1. He, it, he, won't, he probably won't finish as the RB1. I feel confident saying that, but, like, probably RB3, you know. Yeah, I yeah that's know, fair. Man. I think I think you have to put him there. The reason I kept him up there, because I do think Elijah Mitchell could have a role in the fourth quarter if they're pulling away. I think it's because of the Ayuk thing. Like, C-Mac hasn't really been involved in the receiving game that much this year. This could be the game where now all of a sudden he's back. Well, I think, I think uh, what's his face? Shanahan came out after last game and was like, we need to get Elijah Mitchell more. Yeah. We can't keep, like, giving this many touches to C-Mac. And I forget what I was listening to, but I think uh, in terms of snaps, it's like 125 for C-Mac. 10 to Elijah Mitchell and no other back is they need to the preserve field, yeah. him. Yeah, I, I know that's what Shanahan said, but like, you until he actually, him. no, no, absolutely, <laughs> no until way. he actually does it, like, just keep riding CMC as the workhorse running back. It's not like he wasn't, it's not like Shanahan wasn't in charge of who gets snaps during any of these games, either way. I know, I know he said it in the presser, like, oh, we need to work on this, but it's like, no, this is a decision you're making. We're fine with this decision as of right now, but like, it does make sense that when you're beating the shit out of a team to, like, get Elijah Mitchell in there. But I also kind of feel like just teams don't think that way in games. I almost feel like even if you're up, like, 14, we might be like, oh, here comes Elijah Mitchell. But I think in actual head coaches' minds, they're like, oh, only, one, like, one scoop and score, yeah, and they're yeah, in yeah. it. One turn. And they're, they're a lot in. more, like, pessimistic yeah. than we are. Yeah, yeah. That's so I, I almost feel like until you see – CMC, like, actually get limited touches. Like, just keep assuming he's going to get 25 carries and five catches or whatever. That's a fair yeah. point. All right. So, Brandon Ayuk, if he plays, you're willing to put him all the way up at wide receiver 16? Yeah, and the reason was because the guys I saw or I'm putting him in front of consisted of Mike Williams. I have him over Devo. I have him over, I think, both the Seahawks guys, Lockett and DK. That That feels... It feels hot. It's not hot as much as it, – it's not about hot takey. That just doesn't feel – like, he's clearly less than 100%. I agree, but I th I think if he's really not able to play, he just won't. Like, in my mind, if he's on the field, he's He's, he's not good. fighting through uh, no. any injuries this game? Like, I think it's – I don't know. I feel like we've seen dudes with shoulder problems, wide receivers, and a lot of the times they re-injure it. I, I'm going to be honest. I'd, I'd push back on that. Like, if he plays, IU probably falls into, like, 25 to 30. Why oh, really? Range for me? Yeah. He's kind of like a stay away unless it's like a sh – like Mike Williams is good enough for me to be like, I'd rather play a healthy Mike Williams than Ayuk, I think. Definitely. Like those types of guys, right? I you think I think how a lot of fantasy teams are built, though. Like if Ayuk's active, you're probably – That's what I'm saying. Like 25-30 is usually going to get into your starting lineup. Yeah. But like if I have a short thing, like I feel good about Mike Williams. Like I definitely play Debo over Ayuk if they're both active uh, just because Debo's like healthy. Where do you have a guy like maybe know. like Christian Kirk in your rankings, if you know off the top of your head? That's maybe, a good one. Maybe someone you're like not sure of who actually probably sits in that range on a more week-to-week -week basis. I mean, Kirk's consistently for me like flirting that wide receiver two flex play range, like mid-20s. Mid-20s. Right. I, th yeah. I think Kirk is probably like where the conversation starts, but I think I would play Kirk over Ayuk. I don't okay. know. I I'm, I'm like maybe weirdly spooked by Ayuk's injury. I feel like weird vibes are coming out of there. And really? this is a you short week. Yeah. I, I, I just straight up just don't think he's playing to be safe. But I think if he does, that means it's it's fine. Okay. So maybe I'm delusional. Maybe you're spooked. We'll, we'll have to see. Delusionally spooked? I like So, that. yeah, they're, they're calling him like a game time decision. And like the podcast I sent you with Dr. Chow, who the uh, fan, uh, what's this, uh, pro football doc, mm -hmm. he, he was a doctor for the Chargers for 10 years or so. He's got good stuff. Yeah, he's great because he actually has been inside NFL locker rooms. And he's like, game time decisions aren't real. He's like, they know what they're doing with the player for, uh, before the game starts, before game day, all that kind of stuff. So is, that, so is that just like, so your so opponent doesn't know whether to game plan for him? Or like, why would why would they just not come out and say, like, he's not active? Yeah, it, it's it's a little bit of that. It's 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 gamesmanship for sure. So for me, I don't know. that that It feels kind of weird the way that they're going about this. There's other, I guess, doctors out here uh, from Deepak. Shona, video suggests AC sprain. Data slightly favors playing week three, 55% chance, but with moderate performance hit, likely full strength week four, week five. So it's one of those things that I would just rather like err on the side of caution when it comes to this week in particular because it's a, like if it was Sunday, four day rest feels kind of intense, but I don't know. I, I just don't think they, sh like with it being the Giants and with everything we're seeing, like how favored they are in every aspect, like I don't see the risk in playing. I agree, but I think similar serious. to like the way that they, 
what you said with like the two touchdown mark, like coaches don't think that way. I also think yeah. they don't think that way either. Sure. They're not. They they don't go into games where like this is such this an easy game. game. Like we there don't need no our cupcakes. guys. Yeah. yeah, I think they think that way too. Because because I, I I feel like I thought that way for a while too, and I'm just like the more I think that way, the more I feel like I'm always wrong when I try to think like that. <laughs> it's true. Um, Debo wide receiver 14 with no IUK with IUK wide receiver 23. Debo is an interesting one because like last week I feel like we were all high on him going against the Rams. He always kills the Rams. Rams play a lot of zone, and I was trying to look this morning to see like where I could find that kind of data. Yeah, what how much zone that they play? Yeah, just like something. I asked Josh from Underdog, and he was like, "I we don't have that data. I get it from like a column that I read that sometimes puts it out like sporadically." I asked Brett, and we'll throw the text up on the screen. Brett's response didn't help me whatsoever. It would help someone I think who understands. They play a lot of man, don't they? So he said, um, "My question was like, I wanted to see what kind of what kind of defense the Giants play. You know, if 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 it's as simple as just like kind of more man or zone." His response was like, Giants don't really have snaps against 21 personnel, uh, which is the most common 49ers grouping, but against 11 personnel, they are third in cover zero, 11th in cover one, seventh to 25th in all different zone coverages. And he just goes on to talk about a ball level of knowledge. I don't understand what he's saying anymore. So I'm just like, okay, play Debo if, if I think he's <laughs> yeah. out, and vice versa. That's that's interesting that they, they uh, have, haven't faced much 21 personnel. Yeah, he said, honestly, when the Niners come out in 21 and 12 personnel, I expect Wing to match it with big bodies and just play cover three, which means if Debo is getting the ball, it's probably screen game, maybe some RPOs, or if they get a look they like for a dump off on bootlegs. Big thing to watch is if Dexter Lawrence is just beating the shit out of their center on first down, because if he is, then Kyle won't be able to run the ball anyway, which means going past first on first down, and maybe that's when you get Debo action. So I was, I was asking him more towards Debo. That's why he was like responding and more of like a Debo aspect of Getting things. Some but deep stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's fucking Brett, dude. Yeah. It's, it's like you ask him one question, it's 97 different coverage answers. I'm like, okay, forget I asked. Uh, let's talk about something that's less ball. Let's talk about kickers on underdog, dude. It's <laughs> just like my favorite storyline of the entire day. If you guys are new to underdog, new to underdog, we have just smashed our picks over the last couple of weeks. I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. I think we're... Uh, we're on fire. Gut told me what his pick was, too, actually, which we'll get into afterwards. Okay. If you're new to underdog, they give you a free square. 0.5 square total yards for Daniel Jones for this upcoming matchup. So you've got a free square to start your slip. And I'm going to give you another free square. Jake Moody, the kicker, the rookie kicker for the San Francisco 49ers. They have him at 1.5 field goals made. I am slamming the higher thus far into the short 2023 season. In week one, three for three on his kicks. In week two, three for three on his kicks. So he's going three. He's going three. His line's at 1.5. He's a kicker with power and accuracy. He dunked one from 57 yards, which means if they're you know at the 40-yard line, they're not afraid to actually kick it. Once you show it, coaches, I think, become a little more comfortable giving you those chances. Realistically, this is just like tacking on to an offense that I think is going to have no problem moving down the field, which presents scoring opportunities. If it doesn't end up being a touchdown, then it becomes a field goal for the most part. So I just, I mean, he's, he's kicking he's kicking it through the upright. He's doing it at a, a high volume, a high pace. He's accurate, and the offense is is a, is a powerhouse right now. So 1.5 feels a low. lot of praise for that pick. They should, they should uh, be celebrated. No, nah, like I, I so agree. Like if we don't clip this and put it as its own clip up on like TikTok, YouTube shorts, probably Twitter, make it horizontal, make it native. I'll email it out too if you guys want. Just one slip <laughs> of Jake Moody. Okay. They should like have it. set the line at two. It, to make me choose either three or one. That's what they should have done. Yeah, I mean, I always feel like these things are kind of coin flips, but you know what? The Niners, they like their kickers. They if drafted them If we them went for with due logic, technically, he'd be due to go lower, but... No, if you went with due, he'd be due for four or five this game. Oh. Yeah. Idiot. Severely underperforming. <laughs> yeah. Jake Moody. <laughs> Jake Moody gets me in some some sort of mood, man. All right, I got uh, the 49ers still, but on the other side of the ball... Nick Bosa to get over 0.5 sacks. I got good news. I got bad news. Bad news, believe it or not, Nick Bosa has zero sacks on the season. I'm a little surprised by that. I'm a little disappointed in that. But the good news is he's still the reigning depoy, and we've mentioned all these Giants offensive line injuries. They've allowed the second most sacks this season. I feel like it's just inevitable for Bosa to get back there and sack Daniel Jones one time, maybe. I'll even say he could get a fumble out of Daniel Jones. And to me, Bosa could have even an okay game, and he could get have a sack. He could share with Eric Armstead, share it with Drake Jackson, whoever, and push the line. But I don't think we'll have to worry about that. That's just kind of a conservative situation. I, I really think this is a easy line for him to hit, and he'll get at least one. I also like that the line's half. Yeah. Because a lot of times these dudes, you know, uh, they end up with only half a sack. So it feels like there's a good chance to push, better chance to push or win than just straight up lose. I agree. You know, so – 
I like it. I'm going to go, I guess I got to go with the Giant to complete this slip. Appreciate you. Yeah. I don't, I don't really well, want to we, we do got it. The, uh, we got the Daniel Jones free square. Daniel Jones is the free square this week? Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, for Thursday night. For Thursday night. Okay. Could be lying. I don't know. No, it, no. Use the free square on something else. Use it for Sunday. Love that. Because I'm going to go with Daniel Jones to throw an interception. 0.5 interceptions. We're going higher. We already talked about how he's going to be under pressure all day long. We already talked about that. He's going to be needing to throw the ball because they're probably going to be behind. Mistakes happen. It's inevitable. He's thrown two in one game. He's thrown one in the other. This is just his season. This is his season of interception boy summer, whatever we want to call it. Last year it was Dak. Last year it was Dak Prescott throwing 18, 24, 5 interceptions in a season. Now it's going to be Daniel Jones. Happens where, every year. Where did Dak come into this? It's just every year there's some, there's that one quarterback who throws way more interceptions than expected. It's I can feel it. It's Daniel Jones. Okay. How many do you think he ends up with this year? This year? Did uh, he throw like five last year? He's already that's, three. that's what I'm saying. But it's because he's also like low passing volume guy. This year, though, on low passing volume, 17 interceptions. Jeez. 17 yeah, interceptions. No George Blanda. You know, 40, no. <laughs> 42 in a year still gets a ticket into the Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Another conversation to be had. Another generation to be had. I'm throw, okay, so I'm throwing that one in there to, to complete this. But if you do take the Daniel Jones free square, another one that I kind of like, 49er one. Brock Purdy. Let me get. Let me make sure his, his number is still correct here. Uh, Brock Purdy lower than 28 and a half pass attempts. Last year in six games, he only went higher than this number twice. I think the Niners being able to do whatever they want on offense can probably just run the ball, kill some clock, get out of here healthy. So I don't, I don't think there's a need for Brock Purdy to be slinging the rock Keep like that. Keep building up that slip. Right. Yeah. I also like this one. So so Guts. Uh, yeah, what's Guts? Gut had the higher on Daniel Jones' rushing. So 37 and a half yards. He liked higher. It makes sense. Just on, It's one of those things on paper where it's like he's going to be running for his life. He's going to have a lot of dropbacks. Niners are going to get a lot of pressure. They don't have Saquon, so there's no run game, realistically, other than Daniel Jones. He's hit this twice already. You should have told me that Gut was throwing in a giant, a Daniel Jones one. Because then we'll just go with that. Sure. Yeah, but, with, I mean, like, but, but Gut gets in the TikTok one. He doesn't usually get in the YouTube one. So no, I like, kept well, that he, to us. He met. He, he is now in the YouTube one. Well, now, okay. That's Fine. permanent. Yeah. It's not Guts, going anywhere. Gut's with us at all times. He's in this room with us. Pause. All right, last square. I got one more. Come on, let me rip. One more. <laughs> George Kittle, your tight end three, versus Darren Waller, your tight end four. Who do you think has more receiving yards? Yards? Who who has more receiving yards in this game? Darren Waller. Kittle. What? Kittle. Okay. It's Kittle. The correct <laughs> answer is Kittle. What do you mean, Waller? I think Kittle's more likely to get a touchdown. That's why Rather. I have him above Waller. No. No, 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 no. That's not Waller's going to get eight targets yeah. and go and four for 40. Exactly. And Kittle. Kittle's going to make one big play. He's going to go one for 85 and one. <laughs> I can't. What is your slip? My <laughs> slip is I'm taking Kittle in the rival square Minus. plus plus three receiving yards against Darren Waller. Ooh. He's the underdog against Darren Waller in receiving yards. Okay. Darren Waller has by far the harder matchup. Maybe no Ayuk. No, that I'm I'm totally pivoting. That's my square. Forget about what about what Ditch I said about everything. Forget Daniel Jones. Gut, you can have that one. Forget Brock Purdy. I wasn't confident anyways. What I'm staking my reputation on this week. This is how we keep going undefeated. George Kittle, plus three receiving yards against Darren Waller. Lock it in. Okay. Well, give us some plus minus in. on the game itself. We've got the Giants, plus 10. Niners are giving 10 points over under. Oh, it's actually moved to 44, where it was uh, 44 and a half before. I think I'm just going to take – I hate giving away 10 points. I'm, I'm a moron, and I took the 10 points for the Jets against the Cowboys last week. But I think like 10 points for a team that's as good as the Giants are. And I guess maybe you can make the... They're just not good, though. Yeah, I know. But they have heart, you know? No, I don't think they do. They have good they, teams, teams with teams that They don't have, have heart, that much respect for themselves. Teams that have that much heart get backdoor covers. I don't maybe think maybe a Jake Moody missed field goal. Back. <laughs> Chill. Enough. Enough. Maybe that's you might hit this thing. over with just field goals from Jake Moody. Okay. Is this updated? So what are you taking? <laughs> he looked at me like it's my turn. I don't even know what you picked. I didn't say it was anyone's turn. We don't take turns. We just take spreads. All right, I'm taking the. I'm laying the points with the Niners. Same. That's easy. Same. I'll take, I, I I'll no, take Danny. No, Giants plus ten. No, dude. I'm buying the hook too. Stop. Ten and a half. <laughs> ten and a half backdoor hook <laughs> cover. <laughs> backdoor it. hookers hook. I mean, the Ravens beat the piss out of the Texans. They covered that. The Cowboys beat the piss out of the Jets. Like this is the same type of fight. There's gonna be piss all over. What the was the Cowboys Giants line? Like Sorry. probably four, four and a half. <laughs> And they just got 
It's just like 40. Imagine it was like 38 in no, everybody. It, actually, it. it fell down to three and a half. I was looking at that thinking, yo, division rival. Like, <laughs> it's because the Cowboys Giants are so upset. fraudulent every year. It's like we never know what you're getting out of the Cowboys, and now we know they're, they're pretty good. Yeah, the Cowboys are legit. But the Giants are not. They <laughs> but we are... thought the opposite of the Giants. They're for sure fraudulent. And then we thought maybe they could be good. I'm, Cowboys, I'm, it should be the opposite. I'm taking the points, and I'm buying the hook. Ten and a half. If this was Ten Jets, and a half, and we're going under. If this was Jets at 49ers, and this was the spread, what side would you take? Jets. Uh, 49ers. 49ers. If this was Texans at 49ers, and this was the spread, who would you take? 49ers. I think the Giants are the same class of those teams. I actually think, I would actually say the Jets are a better team than the Giants. I think there's a chance that, like, a Dexter Lawrence or someone disrupts the fuck out of the Niners offense. I'm just You're saying just this saying now. You're just saying random shit now. I'm just saying. No IU, Moody misses a field Dude, goal. that's what I'm saying. Waller has more yards than Kittle. It all adds up. Dude, yeah, if you really think, like, <laughs> Dan Jones a better fantasy QB than Purdy. No, I'm, I'm going to say that the numbers the Giants, don't lie. I'm going to say that the Giants plus 10 is what Jack would call fake sharp. People like too many points. This is still an NFL game. No, it's not. This is men versus boys. This is 49ers versus right. Giants. Giants getting I'm going to buy two points. <laughs> <laughs> Got to cover that significant plus number of 12 11. minus 185. Worth it. I'm not doing picking over under. I'm not. Yeah. I, no, no, no. You have to. I'm doing this I from wrote, now on. I no longer have to take over unders. I mean, I'm 2 0 on over unders. So that's why you keep doing them. And that's I, I why. Don't. Oh, God. I, I wrote down the over for this game, and I am taking the Giants plus 10, so you'd think I have it, like, somewhat close, maybe decently scoring. You know, could could this be a 31-24 game, and we just didn't see that coming? You know, this is in the 50s. 24? Yeah. Nah, no, it's I just, within I 10. Don't think and then I think, if anything, it's lower scoring, if we're going to shoot one way on the on the spectrum. I just don't see how the Niners don't score, and I don't see how the Giants do score. I'm going to say this is like a 31-10 game. So I'll take the under. You think the over-under 44 is just for the Niners points, basically? basically. <laughs> I mean, that's what a 10-point spread pretty much means. It means they're expecting him to be 27-17, right? 44 points. God damn it, go. I'm good. Yeah. She! I'm the only numbers guy at this company. That's what I've been told. Bye. That's what the numbers have told me. Did you not <laughs> just see what I did there? Yeah, that was impressive. That was, a, that was a good outing. I'm not going to lie. It was a guess. I knew I was in the ballpark, but it was just the first guess just happened to be fucking spot on. All right. Did you make the final picks here? Yeah, yeah. take us away, dude. I got 49ers, money line, Giants cover, over 44 points. Take There's the spread, line, spread the you. legs, yeah. take us home. All right. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> you make me sick. All right. We're done. <laughs> we just walk off. Yeah, we just cut the black. What, our predictions for this and the underdog slips probably couldn't have contradicted themselves more.